Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Haspula and I'm a senior lecturer working in Malaysia. Throughout my career, I've had many students come and ask if I could supervise their PhD study. Some are students who are just looking to further their study. Some are individuals who got a bit tired staying in the industry for too long, so they wanted to get back to school. And some are just having difficult time finding jobs, so they decided to add more knowledge until the economy is back to normal. Now, pursuing an advanced degree means carving three or four years of your life doing research. Throughout this journey, you will be together with one supervisor that's going to guide you all the way to graduation. Therefore, it is important that you find someone that is understanding, that allows you to make your own decision, a world-class researcher, and allows you to have a work-life balance so that you can have a wonderful experience working on your PhD. However, I found that many of the potential PhD students don't have any idea where to start finding their supervisor. They just don't know where to find them, what to ask, and sometimes are too afraid to ask. Because of this, you could end up working with the wrong supervisor. This is a terrible situation to be in for the next 3 to 4 years of your life. Not to mention, if you have a massive disagreement in this period, it could straight up lead to failing your study. But even if you manage, then by the time you become a researcher, you will not be able to leverage your supervisor's connection. This could be bad for your future career. Therefore, in this video, I'd like to share a few tips and tricks that you could use to find a good supervisor for your PhD studies. These tips are kind of a step-by-step -step method of how you can find your ideal supervisor. This is important as it will help you find someone that's not only understanding but knows where and when to push you to move towards your research objectives. A PhD is already very difficult technically, so having a good supervisor means one less thing to worry about when it comes to human relationship. And perhaps more importantly, you'll get a friend that you respect for life. In the end of this video, I have a very special gift for you if you are really serious about pursuing your advanced degree. In order to find yourself a good PhD supervisor, you first need to know what is your area of interest. I understand that the exact area is not fully defined yet, but you should have some kind of idea what is it that you like to study on. For example, if you are in mechanical engineering, you could choose between fluids mechanics, thermodynamics or solid mechanics. If you enjoy thermodynamics during your undergrad studies, perhaps you'd want to consider doing research in this area. If you're already in the industry and there is something in your line of work that you'd like to understand more, this could also be your area of interest. From my experience, looking for a supervisor that is in your area of interest works out better than simply choosing a supervisor then adjust your interest based on his or her interest. Remember, this journey would take you 3 to 4 years, so working on something that you like is very important. Once you roughly know your area of interest, it is time to Google who is the leading expert in that area. At this stage, do not limit your search just within your country, but just keep the option open by figuring out who is the leading expert globally and work your way down from there. Now, the trick to find an expert is by looking at his or her most recent publications. So, go to sites like sciencedirect.com or scopus.com and type in your area. You'd want to look at the most recent publication probably within 5 years. This is because researchers change their area of interest all the time. So if your potential supervisor is working in your area of interest within that 5 years, it's very likely that they are still working on it. This is the best way to find the leading expert in your area. In PhD level research, you cannot be looking for celebrity researchers that appears simply on TV or newspapers. You need to find evidence that this is a real expert, which is why you got to look for publications. As the scientific publications have been peer-reviewed before it's published, you can be confident that the name you find in the paper is the real deal. Now, when you find a few experts that you like in your area, probably 10 to 15, and when you found their names, find out where they are and their email addresses. The next thing that you should do is to craft an email and prepare your resume. The resume should state your academic background, your past research experience, and what are the projects that you have been working that are related to his or her area. 
Also list down the subjects that you have taken that is related to the research area that you are interested in. Now you need to understand that academics are usually very busy. So you have literally one shot at him to get to know you. Therefore, in your very first email, ask him or her if there is a position available as their PhD student and attach together your resume. Please do not simply ask without sending your resume as he or she might simply forget about your request. By being prepared like this, it shows that you are a proactive person which does something without being asked and that is a great quality to have as a PhD student. When you have emailed a few potential supervisors, also find out about their research group. Usually, a professor would have a research group of his own at his institution. So find out about their group and try to connect one of the group member that is still currently working with the professor. The reason for you to contact him or her is to find out what is it like to work with this professor. You can find out a lot about your potential supervisor using this method. Find out whether he has time to actually advise the students instead of being busy doing his own work. Does he push his team too hard until everyone is unhappy but have no choice but to stay because they already paid their fees? Surely this is not ideal especially for 3 to 4 years. Or you can find out if they are genuinely happy staying in the group. Usually the group would share a fundamental understanding of the topic. So having a strong relationship with them is a great asset. Even though you will eventually work on something different for your own research. This exercise will allow you to rule out a few professors that you have already sent an email to. And now you are one step closer to finding your ideal supervisor. Finally, Another important tip is that it is a good practice to only approach one academic in one institution. As a lecturer myself, sometimes I talk about my student with my colleague. We develop a sense of trust between us lecturers because we are working together for a very long time. A student will only be there about 4 years stops. So the worst thing a student can do is to create frictions between academics in the same department. Imagine that if you send the same email to two academics working side by side in the same institution and both are interested in being your PhD supervisor so both will conduct interview with you and both will recommend you to the admission. Imagine how personal it could get after all that effort you'd end up working for someone else, let alone their own colleague. This would ruin any prospect of working together with the other guy if you choose research as your future career. There won't be many people working in your specific area so it is likely that you will continue to see him. So let's just avoid the awkwardness from the very beginning and only contact one academic in one institution. There you go guys, whether you are a student looking to pursue your advanced degree or you are now in the market to get a PhD, these are the tips that you can use in order to find your ideal supervisor. Remember, you will be working hand in hand within the next 3 to 4 years of your life with this individual. So, a little effort in the beginning would be well worth it in the end. An excellent supervisor could also potentially set you up for a very successful career in the future. Finally, as a gift for you, if you need the exact email that I used to make my first contact with my PhD supervisor, send me an email and I'll send you the script. I hope this will help you if you are serious in pursuing your PhD. If you find this video useful, do consider subscribing to my channel. I post videos about life as an academic, engineering tutorials and study advices like this based on my experience. Finally, do stay safe and push as hard as you can to achieve your dream. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.